good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Claire. It's great that you are here. Hello, Rachel. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. So, welcome to this evening's live. This is going to be a really informative session. Okay. I have invited you on, Emma, so hopefully you will pop on in a second or two. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Tonight is going to be really informative. We're going to be speaking this evening about lichen sclerosis. Okay, and I'm delighted that we have Emma Norman joining us from Lichen Sclerosis UK Awareness. And we're extra lucky because obviously this week is Lichen Sclerosis UK Awareness Week. So Emma's very, very busy. So we're lucky that she's joining us. Okay. Let me try this. Send request again. She will be joining us soon. She will, honestly. Here you are, see? There you are. Hello. What happened? I kind of pressed to, to come on and then suddenly it just went off. Instagram oh. does these things. Yeah. These things. <laughs> so everybody who's joined us so far, thank you for joining us. And I'm here to welcome Emma, Emma Norman. <coughs> Hi. So you're super busy this week, as I've just been telling everybody, this is Lichen Cirrhosis UK Awareness Week. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and talk to us all about lichen cirrhosis this evening. Oh, no, thank you for having me. It's quite busy this week, yeah? <laughs> it's quite nice to do something a bit different. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so everybody who is watching, um, I'll, I'll launch into it because we've got lots that we want to cover this evening. Okay, so lichen sclerosis is a skin condition affecting many women, men and children. Okay, so it can affect all parts of the body, but it can also affect the genitals, which is what we'll be talking um, particularly about this evening. Okay, so let's launch into it, Emma. Do you want to tell um, everybody who's watching a little bit about your story of... Um, lichen sclerosis and diagnosis uh yeah sure um i um had symptoms from about five years old so i was um child sufferer yeah. um although i'm quite embarrassed to sort of say anything but i do remember um sort of standing in a, a classroom being really itchy really sore yeah um not knowing what's going on um of course i never went to a doctor um not until um sort of i was about 21 I think I was and yeah. I, I finally put up yeah so um all through teenage years it was I knew something wasn't right um I knew um you know as I got older if I tried to have sex it just hurt I couldn't do it at all um and it was actually a conversation with one of my boyfriends at the time who said you know you really need to go see a doctor about this and it's not right um so I did um he had a look at me and said well you know I don't think it's, it's quite right there so I want you to go and have a smear test um so I booked in with the nurse and um, she took one look at me and asked me if I'd been abused as a child because of the bruising and how bad it looked basically yeah 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 I was just bruised and, and wrinkly and um, you know it just it didn't look good at all so of course I mean that was a massive shock um, and she told me that actually, you know, I was too small for this movie speculum to go in, so she oh. couldn't actually do the smear test anyway. Okay. Um, so from there, it was sort of back to the doctors, and then um, he referred me to gynaecology at my local hospital. Mm -hmm. He, um, the consultant there, was really good actually. Immediately when he examined me, he sort of said, "I think I know what's going on here, but I want to take a biopsy just to see." Yeah. Um, so we did, and it confirmed that I've got uh, lichen sclerosis. There really wasn't sort of anything about any information. I remember him sort of printing off a sheet. Right. I think it just had basic um, information on it, really. Um, you know, there was no cure. 
Yeah, just a just a, a plain sort of piece of paper. I'm not even sure if he wrote it up himself actually. Right. To it off. I'm quite sure. But yeah, I mean, I think all it said on it really was, you know, there, there's no cure for it. Um, it's a skin condition, and you know, it could potentially lead to cancer. Um, so uh, he did another biopsy just to rule out uh, vulva cancer, which luckily there wasn't any. There wasn't any precancer cells or anything. Yeah. He didn't really know a lot about it. He didn't know enough about it to treat me. Yeah. So he sent me to um, a, a hospital in London, um, which for anybody that saw the live I did with Jane, uh, with me and my menopausal vagina, um, the dilator story, <laughs> I won't go into it too much. It was quite horrific. Um, but yeah, basically they tried to sort of keep me in for three days, um, moved up the, the dilator treatment very quickly, um, sort of three sizes every day, uh, ripping me and tearing me. Yeah. Um, to the point, I think after a couple of days, I ended up having to speak to my consultant again. I was in tears and I was like, you know, I can't do this. You know, um, I didn't even have, um, you know, the um, the option to insert it myself. They were doing it for me. Doing it for you. So, so, so let's just pause a second for the for the people who are watching who, who don't know about this. Obviously, the speculum, the smallest speculum for you to have a smear test was, was too big. Because of the skin condition, lichen cirrhosis, it can thicken all the skin and then it can make the entrance to the v vagina really, really painful. Yeah. And it can make it really narrow. So to put anything up there, even a tampon or something like that, is excruciatingly painful. So what they were trying to do for you at the time was to make it larger by putting what they call a dilator in. Now, these are things that usually have to be yeah. introduced very slowly and gradually over time. But this sounds horrendous. You were having a few different sizes put in over a very short space of time and causing more damage. Yeah, about, yeah. yeah, about three sizes a day. So, yeah, I mean, when you think, um, I think that the smallest speculum, they sort of class it as the, the pediatric speculum. Um, not because it's used on children, but um, more because of the size of it, because yeah. it's so small. Um, and really, uh, the first dilator size is about that size. So, you know, when you think, you know, they couldn't get that inside me anywhere to do the smear. And then suddenly, I would have been, you know, size one, then two, then three, sort of put inside me. And then, you know, obviously I was tearing, I was bleeding, it was really painful. Um, and then by the second day, I think they were up to about size five. So, um, you know, I was in absolute agony. Um, and... Actually, I mean, that story sort of ended up having a bit of a positive outcome anyway. Okay. Because it was only years later when I, I met my best friend. Um, she had the same consultant as me, um, and she was being treated for uh, vaginismus. Mm -hmm. um, and she was told, actually, by my consultant and the uh, the clinical nurse about my story of what happened to me. Um, and so they were using it to educate other people. You know, don't let anybody else insert them make sure you do it yourself, make sure you do it, you know, right, so um, a, a pace that suits you. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, for a really negative situation, yeah, a really positive thing came out of it and that people were being properly educated on how to use them. Oh, that's, that's good. So traumatic, though. Well, yeah, it really was, really was. I mean, sort of dealing with lichen sclerosis anyway, in the early stages of diagnosis, it's, it really affects your mental health anyway. Yeah. And then to have to go through that on top of it, um, you know, I sort of probably did end up with quite a bad case of depression and, you know, a breakdown. I think I had an actual meltdown um, around about that time, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, from there, really, I was um, sort of brought back to my consultant and transferred to a gynecologist um, who was also a, a, an oncologist. Mm -hmm. She didn't really know a lot about sclerosis. Um, she'd heard of it. But she was um, very experimental with the treatments that she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I did have a few conditions um, to have the clitoral hood separated, mm -hmm. um, which probably lasted about a year, which is why I had uh, quite a few of them, about three of them, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and then after that, she tried um, two skin grafts, which they basically, they took, I think, the first one from my groin um, and applied it. Um, I'm not quite sure where they applied it, actually. I think it was um, along the lab years. Mm -hmm. Um, and near the um, that one became infected, although I didn't know at the time I had another skin condition called hydradenitis superativa. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so I think that's possibly why my groin became infected. Um, but when they did the second one, they took it from 
uh, my lower abdomen and that was fine. Um, and actually that lasted quite a few years. I didn't have to have any more operations or anything. Um, so I think, you know, through that and, and through the dilator treatment and doing that properly, eventually um, I was able to have sex. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't necessarily if I said that it's the most pleasurable experience. It does still hurt, especially when you tear. Um, but, you know, I was able to do it. And, um, you know, seven years ago, I had my daughter, well, nearly eight years ago now, I had my daughter uh, via cesarean. Um, obviously, they, they didn't want me to have a, a vaginal birth at the time. Um, just because, you know, the effects of the lichen supposed to be scarring and they weren't sure what damage it was going to do to me or what damage it was going to do to my daughter. So, um, yeah, I was booked in for a caesarean, um, which actually all went fine. It went really well. Um, and, uh, I mean, since that, really, it's just sort of keeping an eye on her because obviously lichen sclerosis can affect children as well. Um, so it's, it's constantly monitoring her, especially if she's itchy or if she's sore. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, recently, a few months back, I had biopsies and it actually showed the, the lichen sclerosis is inactive. Um, but I had the biopsies because I've got um, sore areas and some sore, some sore spots. So they were a bit concerned that there might have been some pre-cancer changes there. Right. Um, did the biopsy. It came back, there, was, there wasn't any. There was no pre-cancer changes. There was no VIN, mm -hmm. um, HPV or anything like that. Um, but something else is going on. So I'm seeing a, a dermatologist. Uh, on the 17th mm -hmm. just to have implications find out what's going on um i think they're possibly thinking along the lines of it, it could be like in plainness which is very similar yes so um yeah so about to be investigated for that one as well although i was told a few years back actually that i had like in plainness as well okay. um but they never really did anything about that one um probably because the, the treatments are the same it's really it's still stable yeah okay so I don't know if any of you people who are watching have this condition yourself. Um, it's not a nice condition to have. It, like Emma says, it doesn't just go away. It does need lifelong management. Um, so if you were given some cream for a couple of weeks for it to go, yes, it will help. But that's not the end of it. It's something that just needs constant management. So, Emma, did you want to explain to the ladies and gentlemen who are watching this evening what lichen sclerosis is yeah sure so uh lichen sclerosis is a, a skin condition um in the majority of cases it will affect the genitalia of men and women and um, children as well um most commonly the the effects of it are that you you tend to um you get some scarring or you get um what they call fusing, so the, the labias, or well, the inner and outer lips all kind of fuse together, um, so you kind of lose those. Um, and obviously sex can become quite painful as well because of it, because of the, the vaginal opening can shrink as well um, and cause tearing. Um, they're not quite sure what causes it. They suspect it could be um, an autoimmune response. So um, basically where your immune system is overactive and it attacks the healthy cells. Um, and in our case, the text, yeah, it attacks the, the genitalia. Um, but they also think it could possibly be hormonal as well. So there's, I mean, there's various things that they're, they're looking into regarding what can cause it or what is causing it. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, they're not quite sure <laughs> what's causing it. Um, but yeah, a couple of suspicions. There. Yeah, there are, aren't there? And I think maybe now's a good time to explain that quite often people are misdiagnosed. Quite often people may have itching, they may have white patches, etc. Um, they may think it's thrush themselves. So they go to the chemist, they buy themselves some canistin and they self-treat. And then a few weeks later, it's back again. So they go back and self-treat. But also some people go to the surgery and say that they've got these symptoms and they're not being examined. So it isn't as uncommon as a lot of people may think. So a lot of people who may think they have thrush or been told they have thrush, they really need to make sure whether they've had a swab. A swab is a good way of saying if it is thrush or if it's, you know, lichen cirrhosis or lichen planus or any other vulval skin conditions. Um, because it's far more common, isn't it, Emma, than what we are... Yeah, it is. 
yeah, this is it. I mean, the thing is, you know, I mean, even um, today, I think I was messaged by somebody who had said, you know, they've been to their doctor and they were told today that it's rare. And I was like, actually, no, it's not that rare. You know, I mean, obviously, I run a support group. We speak to people through the awareness pages. Yes. I mean, our support group um, today, actually, what the figures were, and we've got, you know, over 4,300 people, you know, in our support group alone. So, you know, this isn't a rare condition at all is very common um and i think you know that they don't have statistics on it and they vary so some will say you know one in a hundred women might have it others will say one in 30 women you know as low as that could have lichen sclerosis yeah um and of course is as well you know there's so many creams out there you know you see these adverts on tv that uh, say you know if you've got a vaginal itch you know treat it with this it's you know it's just thrush um but no as you say if if you know if it is that thrush then obviously a swab would show up that it is but a lot of women are, are getting negative results from the swab which means it's not thrush at all yeah. um so you know we're all led to believe that you know itching on the vulva or the vagina is completely normal um and it's harmless and in many cases it probably isn't it could be something because you know as serious as lichen sclerosis or lichen planus, or even vulvar cancer, which, you know, obviously that can cause itching as well. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So we've got someone here saying she was diagnosed eight years ago, age 25, and surgery seven years ago, which was unsuccessful. She's really struggling to manage it, and she says that she, re she relates to your story a lot, Emma. Um, and PN Awareness UK said it's another condition that needs more research. Um, if anyone has any particular questions, we do have um, another expert who's in the audience with you, Claire Baumhauer of Vulval Cancer UK Awareness. So if there's any particular questions that, that are coming up, Claire will be able to answer those for you as well if Emma and I don't see them. There she is. Hi, Claire. Good, good to know you, Claire. <laughs> That's it, do some work. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, suffer for that one later. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. A lot of people do sort of message, yeah, when they, you know, if they read my story. Um, again, I had somebody, you know, who messaged me because she'd, she'd read my story. She hadn't spoken to a family or friends. She was yeah. embarrassed. You know, she felt, um, you know, where she felt like a freak. She didn't feel normal. And, you know, the, the sad reality is when you're first diagnosed, that's how you feel. Yeah. I felt the same. I remember having an absolute meltdown yeah. at my mum and mum. You, know, you, you can't be acting the way you're acting. You need to deal with this. And I just remember just blurting out, no, no I'm a freak. I, I just, yeah. I don't feel, I'm not normal. Yeah. But, um, you know, after years, you know, positive hope there, um, you know, it, that does get easier. And you do realise actually what's normal anyway Exactly. You know, normal for me is have fucking sclerosis. Yeah. You know, and it's just king. You know, the things you do. Yeah. And eventually, you you do you accept it, and you know you find ways to deal with it, and except you know you are normal. You are the same as everybody else. Yeah. You know, and you you can't let it define you. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. Right. And it is it's good to take that positivity out of it. Okay. Someone's asked, can you be reliably diagnosed for LS? without biopsy so did you want to answer that one emma or shall we move on and let um claire answer that one within the oh here she is she's answered it there you go just like that and she answers it <laughs> we'll carry it <laughs> but, uh, yeah you can be positive you can be diagnosed without having a biopsy reliably Fantastic. yes yes you don't have to have the biopsy okay all right so shall we talk about signs and symptoms Obviously, it's regarding yeah. the vulva, but it can also be around the perineum, which is the area between your vulva and the anus. And it can be the anus itself that you can get some symptoms, isn't it? Can't you? It is. Yes, they talk uh, quite often about the figure of eight. So that is sort of around the, um, the vulva, including the clitoris and the, the vaginal opening. Yeah. And then obviously down um, to make the figure of eight around the anus as well. Um, a lot of the common symptoms are the itching or, in some cases, both uh, the itching and the burning sensation when you go to the toilet or even just constantly itching or burning or both. Um, so that's definitely first symptoms that, you know, if you're getting those, go get it checked out. 
Um, and of course, then the next ones are, you know, your white patches. Um, you can split, you can tear quite easily, even just a simple thing as, you know, um, wiping yourself with a toilet roll after you've been to the toilet. It can just tear. I've done it quite a few times myself, actually. It's very painful. Um, so splitting and tearing, um, any sore spots or ulcers, um, those you need to be particularly mindful of because obviously if they last longer than four weeks, that could potentially be a sign of, of a cancer. So that does need investigating. Mm -hmm. um, but it is very common to have sore spots and ulcers with lichen sclerosis as well. Um, and then obviously other things are um, the labias, like I said earlier, they fuse together, so they'll stick together. The vaginal opening can shrink and you can get quite a lot of tears, um, especially during intercourse um, around the vaginal opening and on the perineum as well. Um, so they are uh, the most common symptoms. That, um, But I mean, it's good to point out as well, actually, not everybody has all of these symptoms. Yes. So you know, somebody who could, just, you know, they may just have the itch or they may just have the burning or they may just have the white patches. They could have one symptom, they could have two or three or five symptoms, but still have like sclerosis. So it's always making note, and it's why we always say, you know, check your vulva at least once a month. Because if you've got any of these symptoms, they need investigating just to, even if it's just to rule out, um, you know, like sclerosis. Yeah. Um, or, you know, it could be thrush, but chances are it's not you know, especially if you're having those symptoms constantly, continuously, and they come back um, a lot. Um, so we all say, you know, get a mirror and check, you know, feel for any sore spots. Um, you know, no, keep a diary as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're having persistent itching, you know, write it down in a diary the days and, you know, how long you're having that itching for or every time it hurts or burns or feels like it's burning, like you're on fire. If you go into the toilet to urinate, um, write it down in a diary, keep a, a, a diary of it. Um, if you see any white patches, write it down because it's so important to take those notes with you yeah. so that a proper diagnosis can be made. Um, it's, 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 and then it also, yeah, with the, with the checking, it also helps you to, to see. If you get sore spots, measure them. You know, they can get bigger. And if they get bigger and they are persistent, as I said, could be something more serious than even like a throat. Absolutely. And so, it's yeah, we all... Such a good idea to keep a diary of it because if you go and see your primary care clinician, whether it's the doctor or a nurse, if you've got that information there and you've got a record, it really helps them to do a more accurate diagnosis for you as, as well. So, yeah, that's, that's really good information. That's it. And we do say as well, I know a lot of people are really uncomfortable doing it, but, you know, if you can, take photos. If you've got an area that you're a bit worried about, you know, like I say, if you've got the white patches or if you've got any tearing or sores or ulcers, take photos of them and take them with you as well to your appointment. I think there are apps as well. You know, if you don't want to keep them on your phone, there's um, apps you can get. Um, Claire might be able to put it. I think she knows yeah. what the name of it is. Quite a fault, <laughs> I think. Claire's told me before. One of them. One yeah. Of them vault so if you're t if you're taking photos you've got it somewhere safe on an app so if your children or your family members yeah. are looking through your phone they're not going to see a picture of it so you don't have that to worry about yeah 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 exactly so yeah there's safe places you can keep them but definitely if you can take photos um because i mean also that helps them to see because if you you know there's been many times where we can have symptoms and then by the time an appointment comes through, suddenly, you know, the symptoms have gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are sort of consultants might sit there and look at you and go, well, I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing there. It looks fine. Yeah. And um, so at least if you've got the photos, you can, you know, get them out and say, look, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what keeps happening. Um, so, yeah, it can help make a, a diagnosis as well. So it's worth, you know, persevering through the embarrassment of, of trying to take a vulva selfie which is the easiest thing to do to be honest I had to do it recently <laughs> um, it's really hard but it is you know as long as you can yeah this is it you know I mean I, I say I had to do it recently with my doctors for this referral for dermatology oh you know you didn't send any any pictures through well you didn't tell me I needed to yeah. so there I was trying to take a vulva selfie yeah and I wish I'd had a selfie stick <laughs> it would have made it so much easier probably that's right yeah um, 
good idea. And you can get the selfie sticks with actual mirrors on. So when you're checking, that, that, is, that is one way. Now I've come up with the keyboard on here and I was trying to click on the questions because there was, I don't know, oh, here, got it back again. This is good. Okay, there's some lady, a lady here, a question, Emma, that you might want to touch on. Can you talk about emollients and how to use them and when to use them with the steroid? She was told the steroid would thin the skin, so only to use it sparingly. Have you got any thoughts on that one? Yes. Um, firstly, um, it's a bit of a fake news alert, I'm sorry, but it's so I doesn't thin the skin. So many doctors and um, consultants, um, not all of them, but a lot of them will tell you that steroids thins the skin. It doesn't. Lichen sclerosis thins the skin on the vulva. The steroid actually reverses the thinning. So you have to use it um, with a strict regime. Um, so you have to start off with using the, the steroid um, probably once a night, once a day for the first month. And then you'll change it to once every other day, second month. Yeah. And then on from the third month onwards, twice a week. And that's continuous um, because that's how you keep it under control. Yeah. You know, you're less likely dose. to go into a flare-up if you're doing a maintenance dose. Um, so no, absolutely, steroid does not thin the skin. There's absolutely no reason to be scared of it at all. I've been using it for, you know, probably 16 years now, 15, 16 years now. Um, and it hasn't thinned my skin. It's helped my lichen sclerosis. My lichen sclerosis is now inactive because I've been using steroids. So please don't be scared of it. Um, and as for the emollients, there's quite a few good ones out there. Um, uh, even one of the competitions we're doing at the minute from Emolin UK, um, they've actually developed one that you spray on. So, you know, for a lot of people who don't like looking at the vulva, you can, you know, spray it on instead. As long as you're getting the moisture, from the emollient into it. Um, there's, there's quite a lot of good ones out there, actually. Uh, yes, Vaginal Moisturiser is good. Um, I think Olive and Bee is also another good yeah. one. As long as it's a really good zero base, so there's nothing in it, just a moisturising cream. You can even buy them from, you know, like local pharmacy. I think maybe they might even have their own version of them. Um, you can get them on prescription. So as long as it's a good zero based moisturiser or emollient, um, you know, make sure you're using that. And make sure you use it as a wash as well. So don't use soap products. Use the moisturiser instead to wash your vulva with. Um, and as for applying it, um, wait 30 minutes between applying your steroid cream and the emollient because otherwise the, the steroid cream will become inactive. It will become ineffective. Mm -hmm. It won't work. Mm -hmm. um, so I would leave it at least 30 minutes before applying the two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. There's a lot of discussion on here, which is fantastic. It's good to, good to see people talking. Okay. Yeah. So how can women get help? You're doing very well with your cough and cold that you have at the moment. You're doing very well. <laughs> Thank today. you. I promised. I did take a, a, I think it was a potter's thing. I almost killed myself trying to take it before I started. <laughs> Just so I wasn't sitting there coughing. Um, and actually, my, my partner, before he went to work, there was winding me up. He was like, oh, you know, at least you've, you've got a husky voice on. People will love it. I was like, shut up. Good work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, but yeah, so um, help for women. Um, the first port of call is always going to be go to your GP. If you're not under a consultant already, if this is new symptoms or you're going for the first time, um, go and see your GP. Um, now, if you can't get a GP's appointment, there are women's health clinics as well. I know there's a lot of stigma around those. You know, people are like, oh, you know, you only go there if you've got an STI, mm -hmm. which like as close as it's not, can I say it's not an STI. Um, but you can go to a women's health clinic. And actually, a lot of women have been diagnosed with lichen sclerosis from a women's health clinic. You know, they're absolutely fantastic. So either go to yeah. your GP or go to a women's health clinic. Uh, from there, either of them can actually refer you for, um, to a gynaecologist or a vulval dermatologist, um, somebody who will specialise in skin conditions of the vulva, um, who can then put you on the correct treatment and get you a diagnosis as well. Um, as I say, a lot of the time, you don't have to have the biopsy. You know, a lot of them won't do the biopsy unless they suspect that there could be some precancer changes going on um, or if 
the symptoms maybe don't look as, as big as they do in possibly other women, then maybe they might do a biopsy. Um, but generally speaking, I think they try to tend to avoid doing a biopsy if they don't need to. Um, so then obviously once you've got your biopsy, you should be seen probably once every three months yeah. um, in the first instance from your um, consultant. And then it might go down to once every six months, maybe once a year, okay. um, once they can see that actually it's, it's under control. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely go to your GP first or a women's health clinic and get a referral to either a gynecologist or a vulval dermatologist. Okay. And um, yeah, on a treatment plan. <laughs> so we're not talking about self-treatment here, what we, like we referred to earlier, grabbing something off the shelf in the chemist and self-treating. What can women do no. to help themselves? Obviously, they'll do what you've just said. They'll go and have their correct appointment with the correct health professionals that can correctly diagnose them. So in between those times, what can they do to help themselves? What, what are your suggestions? Um, my suggestions, as long as... Um, obviously, the main thing is going to be to use the, the steroid correctly, as I said earlier. Um, to make sure you use that strict regime with it um, yeah. and use the moisturiser as well, a good double base, um, zero base, sorry, moisturiser, um, which will um, give some more moisture to the vulval area, which should help alleviate symptoms anyway. But um, a lot of other things we tell people to do, which we, we kind of asked our members of our support group, you know, what sort of things help you so that we could sort of pass it on. Um, and quite a lot of them said about um, antihistamines. They take an antihistamine before bed. So if you're extremely or you've got that persistent itch, yeah. um, and for anybody that has suffered with this itch before, it's almost, I mean, I've said it before, but it is like having flea bites. It's that intense, really intense itch. So, of course, once you've got that, trying to sleep is impossible. Mm -hmm. And even if you do get or you do fall asleep, you probably find that you're actually scratching and making yourself bleed in the night. Yeah. Um, so taking histamine before bed can help with that itch to help break that scratch yeah, itch so I, cycle. Because yeah. you, as you said earlier, Emma, it's lichen sclerosis that makes the vulval skin thin. And if it's itching, yeah. the scratching, it's going to tear very, very easily. And I guess it's going to be more prone to infection at that time as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, as soon as you know, if you get some some cuts, or if you cut yourself, or you know, if you break the skin in any way, obviously you are leaving yourself open to some infection. So trying to break that cycle at night. Um, I know some people wear gloves, um, but the antihistamine. I've done it myself, um, especially after I had biopsies as well. It's great if you had biopsies because once they start healing, you get that intense itch from that as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, I as well myself taking an antihistamine and um, before bed can help get a good night's sleep as well um some of the things are sort of epsom salt baths mm -hmm. we do recommend them highly recommend them um, they can be really good especially if you've got any sort of cuts or tearing there mm -hmm. um they're really helping you heal um any of those and obviously reducing that infection as well obviously because it is a salt it can dry so using the moisturizer if you're having epsom salt baths is a really good idea um, you can also buy a, a peri bottle. They sell them quite cheap on Amazon. Um, they're just, it's basically a bottle and it's got sort of a, a squirt bit at the end. Um, so filling that with water, especially if you're really sore when you urinate, um, you know, while you're urinating, you can um, sort of squeeze it in to weaken the urine. Yeah. It should help. Uh, should help, you know, stop the. the the worst of it going onto the vulva skin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also using it after you urinate as well. So rather than sort of using tissues, because, um, you know, a lot of the time there is actually bad chemicals in, in yeah. just normal toilet paper, yeah. even the most expensive one. Yeah. So, um, you know, we will say, you know, use a poo bottle. So rather than using toilet paper, you know, squirt yourself down with some, just some plain water afterwards to get the, the urine off. Um, you know, even if you've got some sort of cotton um, fabric, even the muslin squares, something like that, just to pat yourself dry afterwards, um, is going to be a lot more beneficial for you than it is using toilet paper. Um, if you prefer using toilet paper, there's some great brands out there. Um, Bamboo 
toilet brands, uh, the Cheeky Panda, who we've also got a competition for. Yeah. <laughs> I've known you now. No, you um, we'll, we'll But there's a completely, yeah, because they're, com they're completely natural toilet paper. So actually, um, a lot of members of our group, again, have used this and they swear by it. Their symptoms really improved after using, you know, the, the Cheeky Panda range. Um, so yeah, changing the toilet paper or using a berry bottle. And then uh, there's other things like Instilla Gel. Um, I managed to get some off of my doctor recently, yeah. my nurse, because of all the itching. Um, and all it is, is it's just, it's a, it's a gel, it's a clear gel. They use it in, in hospitals. It's a local anaesthetic. So it will just numb the area yeah. completely. Obviously, you don't want to use that too much. So don't, you know, don't use it, you know, all the time in the day to take away the symptoms completely. Otherwise, you're never going to know if something serious is going on. You're going to lose track of it. So, you know, a good idea is to use that before bed as well, just apply some, again, to help with the itching or the, the pain at night mm -hmm. um, and to break that scratch itch cycle again. Yeah. Um, and um, obviously local estrogen as well. Um, obviously we do the campaigns for vaginal atrophy yeah. as well. So we learn quite a lot off of Jane yeah. um, regarding local estrogen and actually how most of us females, especially we need it, especially in the vulval area. Um, and because the symptoms are so similar between lichen sclerosis very... and atrophy, you know, there's very little difference between the two. Mm. Um, actually, a local estrogen can be really beneficial and can really, really help a lot of lichen sclerosis patients, yeah. um, especially if you get the narrowing of the vaginal opening. Obviously, that can make it a bit more elasticated. Yeah. Um, it can help, um, you know, with sex or if you are using the dilators. Um, so, yeah, using a, a local estrogen cream, especially as well leading up to um, a smear test. Exactly. What a smear test I'm so glad you said A lot that. of people. I was, just, I was just edging. We've seen a lady, a, seen a question from a lady who's asked about how can she make um, smear tests less painful because she's been putting one off. Please don't put it off. Please don't. It's important no. to have it done. And Emma has just started and I've just butted in, but I thought I'd bring that in to know that we're actually <laughs> Emma's going to be talking about that right now yes so uh, local estrogen using it um in a few weeks leading up to your smear test it can help um obviously put the moisture back into the vulval area and around the vaginal opening um it can make the skin a lot more elasticated as well so of course when they're putting the speculum in even if they're using the smallest one if you normally tear actually the, the estrogen would help stop the tearing or help prevent the tearing and make it a lot more comfortable um what's you know putting the, the speculum in um so we do highly recommend when going for a smear test make sure you get a, a prescription for local estrogen in the weeks leading up to it yeah. and actually you can take your own as well because the ones that they use quite often that they can leave you know sort of irritation afterwards and can make symptoms a lot worse so if you find a really good um, lubricant, such as Yes lubricants or Silk lubricants as well, are really, really good, yeah. take your own in and, you know, ask them to use it. And definitely, definitely ask them to use the smallest smear test, uh, the, the speculum, sorry. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to have, just because you're an adult, it doesn't mean you have to have, you know, the biggest one going. Um, I mean, I've, I've been there before and I've asked them to use the smallest one. And she didn't. She used, I think it was the medium-sized one. And I tore and I bled. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I should have gone, I should have used the smallest one. And I went, yeah, I did tell you. You know, use the smallest one. This is why I said use the smallest one. So absolutely be adamant that they use the smallest speculum. There is no reason that they can't. There is no reason for them to refuse. Um, so that, again, will help yeah. make smear tests and just, a lot easier. Yeah, just in case anyone's concerned about using oestrogen, the, the amount of oestrogen in the creams and the gels that are applied, the amount of oestrogen is so, so tiny. We don't need much down in the vulva and vaginal area. It's so tiny that a year's supply of that root of oestrogen is equivalent to one HRT tablet. But it really does help the, you know, the area down there really does like the estriol, which is present, or estradiol. Um, and it really does help really plump everything out again. And as Emma said, it helps it more elastic. So please don't worry about that. And your GPs should happily prescribe you some, particularly if you need it to help you.
to have your smear test, which is very, very important. Does KY jelly... Yes, for everyone as well. No, no, no. Somebody's asked about KY jelly. Good for moisturising. We no. Have... no, no. <laughs> it dries you out no. more. No. <laughs> Yes, no, don't use uh, KY. Um, stick to sort of yes or, or silk because there's, you know, there's ingredients in them. They're completely natural ingredients, which means they're not going to irritate. Um, KY jelly, I can't remember the, the ingredients. There's glycerol or something that's in them. Uh, so many ingredients yeah. in many of them that really are not good for the vulva and, you know, can cause so many more problems. So stick to completely natural uh, lubricants. Yeah. And, and as I say, <laughs> definitely take your own yeah and you can get both of them on prescription now can't you Anna? i know you can get silk on prescription yeah. i think you can yes as well now i'm sure you're not sure yeah i'll double check with them but yeah i think you can but if you have a look yeah. at the website they'll send you um free samples for you to try to yes so yeah see see which works best because what works one for one person works better for somebody else so it's a bit of trial and error really yeah this is it. Although, I mean, I did have a conversation with, um, I can't remember who it was, there was somebody at Yes recently um, in an email. She wanted me to post um, in the group about their oil based lubricants because they use quite a lot of, well, they've had a quite a lot of um, LS patients use it yeah. and they found it's a lot better. It's really, really good for people with lichen sclerosis. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, <laughs> going back to the competition, sorry. Um, <laughs> We are, um, you are. have decided to give away uh, three tubes of it. <laughs> no. um, yes, yeah, yes, they're giving away three tubes of it for our competition because it's so good for lichen sclerosis affected skin. Um, so if you can try the, the oil based lubricants from Yes um, and see how you get on with those ones. Well, well, I think of it, Claire, if you're still around, did you want to put details in the comment box about um, the website? and about your and Emma's Instagram account so people can follow and they can enter the competitions if they want to. So did you want to talk to us in more detail about your support group? Because this is something else that women can use in between seeing the um, doctors for their regular appointments. Your support group is yeah. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It is. Um, yeah, so we set the support group up. I'm going to take a wild guess now. I think it was possibly about five, six years ago, possibly. Um, and we, we set it up because we were members of sort of American groups. Yeah. Um, and we found that the, the information was so confusing on there that although the treatments are the same, mm -hmm. um, no matter where you are, the treatments are always going to be the same, but they call them different names. So, you know, where they're coming out with all these names and we're like, what is that? I don't, I don't know what it is. And actually Carly, who runs the awareness, uh, sorry, the, the support group with us, she set it up mm -hmm. um, for that reason, because, you know, we needed a UK support group. Um, and not long afterwards, she sort of messaged me and then done some research, um, a research project at the time, a few years back. Um, she asked me if I wanted to admin it with her, mm -hmm. which I did. And then eventually, through the awareness, um, I kind of dragged Claire into it. I was like, oh, can you admin with me? <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, so, yeah, but support groups are, are amazing for, especially, um, you're like and supposed to, most people feel like they're alone, like they're the only person in the world who suffers with it. It's really isolating. It's really lonely um, when you haven't got anybody else to talk to especially because it's at the vulva as well, which is, as we all know, it's quite taboo still at the minute to yeah. talk about your vulva or your, your genitalia. Um, so being able to get into a group that not only you can talk about your vulva and there's no stigma there at yeah. all, to be able to, to people to say, look, these are my symptoms. Is anybody else experiencing this? Mm -hmm. And the amount of people that will, you know, the ladies in the group are, are fantastic. We're really, really lucky with you know, the ones that we've got in there, they're really supportive, they're really helpful. And they do like to have a laugh as well. So it's not all sort of serious, you know, constantly. Um, but, you know, with the amount of, of the members that will message myself or Claire and be like, you know, this group has been an absolute saviour, you know, both physically because of the advice that they'll give um, regarding, you know, what they can do to help symptoms, but also the mental side of it as well. You know, so people don't feel suddenly 
you know, you go from being on your own to suddenly having, you know, 4,000 other women who are going through the exact same thing you are, know exactly what you're going through um, and can help with that and get you through it physically and mentally. Um, so, yeah, support groups are, um, are brilliant. And I'll be honest, yeah, I'm biased possibly, but I think ours is one of the best ones out there, <laughs> I will say. Yeah. Because the women are fantastic. Yeah, but like you say, when you're diagnosed with something like that, or even before you're diagnosed, it's 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 a lonely place to be because, like you say, it's it is still very taboo. It shouldn't be, and we're all doing our best to raise no. awareness and get people talking about it. But it it still is. So to know that it must be so wonderful when somebody joins your support group and suddenly there's all these people understanding how you feel. That's got to be worth yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um and of course uh, Claire and myself together we run uh, I think I think we worked it out there was about seven seven different support groups we run. So we're really busy with support groups. And um, obviously Claire runs the vulva cancer as well. So anybody that has been diagnosed with vulval cancer, obviously that is also another one that, you know, people struggle to talk about it and um you know obviously me and Claire were talking about this and she said it quite a few times we did some posts about it mm -hmm. you know a lot of the women that are diagnosed with vulval cancer won't tell people they have vulval cancer they'll tell them it's cervical cancer or something else just because they're so ashamed um so joining a support group like vulval cancer if you have been diagnosed with it has been absolutely amazing for a lot of the women that are in that group as well yeah. um and obviously, and recently we set up the the London Plainist um, UK support group as well. So there was a lot of um, sort of American groups out there, or other even UK groups. Um, there are some out there, but they all allowed. Um, and I'm going to briefly touch on this. I'm probably going to get slated for this. Normally do. Um, so bear with me. Um, but there's a lot of, of support groups out there for London Plainist, and they would condone. They would say, yes, you know, go use borax which is um it, it's, it's an acid basically right. and people were a lot of sort of um alternative therapy groups out there that will say yeah go and you know put some borax in your bath or go and drink it um and you know this is something that is is, is known skin irritant it's supposed to be used as a washing agent in america and actually it's, it's illegal to have it in the uk right. it's banned cool. um definitely people are desperate to find something to help, that they are taking this advice and they're trying it um, and actually probably doing a lot more damage to themselves. We know people that have used it and still got vulva cancer because they stopped using the steroids um, from using it, uh, from, yeah, from using the, the borax. Um, so we are completely anti-borax in all of the groups that we run. We, we will not allow discussions for that reason. Um, and actually, even when I started preparing this, I contacted the British Skin Foundation and the British Society for Dermatologists and, you know, said to them that this was going on. People were, you know, being extremely dangerous with treatments that they were trying um, to the point that actually they put it on their website from a consultant. Do not use it. Well done. It's not. So yeah, that was quite a proud moment, to be honest. Yeah. There's a lot of people that hated me, for it, but, you know. At the end of the day, that you know, as an admin of a support group, our job is to keep our members safe at all times. Yeah. So if you know if they're going to use, in fact, we put it in the questions now. There is no discussion on borax. Um, we have posts in the group that say why we don't allow it. Um, you know, you know, quite frankly, people can they like it or they don't, and if they don't, they don't join the group. Um, but unfortunately, they're missing out on a fantastic support network if they don't. Um. So, um, yeah, so I mean, bearing that in mind with the life and plainness, there's a lot of people with life and plainness as well that in these other groups are being told to, to drink, you know, um, borax, which can cause um, respiratory issues as well, breathing problems, um, and comes with their own cancer risks as well. There's so many bad things about them. Um, so we, I, I set up a, a life and plainness support group as well with the help of a couple of other admin that I know from other groups. Um, so we've got the life and plainness group as well and um, we've got like the children so if there's any parents out there and your child's been diagnosed with lichen sclerosis we have a support group for parents and um, where you can talk to other parents who are going through the exact same and you know the symptoms of the treatments and and everything else and, and actually we've just took a couple more members of 
bad men on for that group as well to help us run it because we're so busy. Yeah. You know, it's really hard to like, keep track of all the groups. Um, yeah, so I think in total there's about different groups. <laughs> so this sort of brings us to the LS Awareness Week. You and Emma, you and Claire even. <laughs> Ask me fair time. It's all right. You and Claire. Jane used to do it. I'm used to it. <laughs> you do. You both work relentlessly. You work so hard. You're so both so passionate and empath empathic. I can't speak tonight about it. And you do all this for free. You don't earn any money from this. You do all this from free for free to help people, which is absolutely amazing. Now, do you want to talk more about the LS Awareness Week now? Tell everybody what it's about, the competitions and where they can find more information. Yeah, sure. So we set up the Awareness Weeks um, about three years ago now. This is our third year of doing them. Um, and initially, when we first set them up, we actually went in and we did it with um, some pelvic uh, floor specialists yeah. called Pelvic Raw. Um, and the first one it was really successful so we decided to do three we did the vulva cancer in november vaginal atrophy where we brought jane on board as well um to do um the vaginal atrophy in december so did i say vaginal atrophy in november no, uh, vulva cancer I say cancer <laughs> brain fog <laughs> if it was uh, so vulva, vulva cancer is in november um the vaginal atrophy is in december and then obviously this month january we do the lichen sclerosis um, and we set it up primarily because there was nowhere that, um, you know, the charities that we came across, even though it's a skin condition, because it was rare, um, they still didn't post about it. You know, they never mentioned it. If they were, you know, even in hashtags, you know, they'd put expo or something else. And they never mentioned lichen sclerosis at all. So it never got any awareness, which is primarily why we set up the awareness pages. Um, not only that, but also to, to help as many people as we can because there's so many women going undiagnosed yeah. um not getting treatment for years and then suddenly when they're diagnosed they're being faced with vulva cancer as well um and i don't want to scare anybody by saying this by all means you know it doesn't happen to anybody it is a very low percentage of people that get vulva cancer from lichen sclerosis um but the aim is is that we can get as much information out there and get people an earlier diagnosis get people on a treatment plan a lot quicker than what they currently are um, which will bring the vulva cancer cases diagnosis down as well. Um, so primarily that's why we, we set them up. So this awareness week, obviously it's really sort of hard going um, to do them, especially when you've done two previously. Um, so I kind of, you know, come out of one, go into another one and then go into another one. Um, and because I do all the images for them, it's really, really, really draining. Really busy. To, um, to, <laughs> it really is. You know, when you're sitting there and you, you think, you know, we post full time today um, just to get as much information as we can out um, with the correct factual information to give everybody everything that they need um, to go to a doctor with. Um, but because we post four times a day, there's, you know, sort of 28 images just for the campaign itself of information that we need to get out there, um, which takes a long time to do. And Claire will often you know, wind me up if, if I send one and, you know, it doesn't quite look right. <laughs> She'll soon tell me that, you know, right now, you know, give it a bit, do it again, do a different one, do it, the, you know, from this angle. And so Claire has a lot of input. Do you know how long I've been spending on that? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And I tell you what, she has to kick my backside quite a few times because I'm really forgetful. <laughs> She'll say to me, oh, well, you know, we've got this day coming up, this awareness day. Have you done the images yet? <laughs> no, sorry, I forgot. Um, but, yeah, so doing the, the images for the campaign is really, really hard. Yeah. You know, because then we have to plan them, decide what is going into each one, what information we feel needs to be out there more based on, you know, sort of the years' experience previous, um, of conversations that have come up from, from other people. Um, yeah, doing the images and, and obviously trying to figure out, you know, what wording needs to go into them as well. And then obviously bringing it all together mm -hmm. as well. You know, yeah. it's generally it's it's me that will sit and send the emails to, to Claire once all the images or you know everything's done, um, or even to Jane. I think for her vagina laboratory one is it's me. I kind of have to email and be like, right, on day one, this is what we're doing at this time. This is what we're saying. This is the image we're posting. <laughs> and I have to do that four times for each day. So it's like seven emails that go through. 
Um, and then on top of that, obviously, we run competitions as well. Yeah. Um, and the reason we do the competitions is because um, we did start off by putting the, the symptoms up of each of the conditions. Um, only we found that a lot of people didn't really want to share them because, you know, obviously embarrassment or, you know, whatever reasons, or they don't want people to know that they've got lichen sclerosis or yeah. you know, things like that. So actually we've tried it a different way this time. Uh, so, you know, comment win instead and, you know, just um, share if you can. Yeah. But we didn't put the symptoms on. We just, put, you know, we're raising awareness for lichen sclerosis in the hope that people will go, oh, you know, what's lichen sclerosis? Exactly. I'm going to go Google that. Yeah, and share with them. You know, it's kind of... Yeah, this is it. You know, it's another way of kind of getting people to go and, and look into it. That's right. So I'm mindful of time. So do you want to tell people what competitions there are going this week? Yes, we have a competition from, um, I'm trying to think which one it was now. Um, we have a competition from um, a close friend of ours who wanted to donate. So she has donated the chocolate. Um, obviously, she wants to remain anonymous. Um, she's not one for sort of being in front of um or flaunting herself um so she's donated the chocolates which is subject to change based on you know when we the winner and what's available yeah. at the time but it will be chocolate um regardless can't go wrong um with it. no exactly exactly um another one is for a personalized candle which um i i contacted her because actually i ordered one she's one of the, the mums at the school um, that i work for and the school had sent me emails of you know different businesses I'd looked at her page and was like, oh, wow, that's a really good idea. So I ordered one um, and then asked her, you know, would she be willing to donate one to a competition? And she was, luckily. And they are amazing. They're fantastically done. Um, Andy's mum really, really loved hers. So um, we've got that one. We also have emollient, which is the, the spray emollient, um, which is really good for lichen sclerosis. It means you don't necessarily have to look if you don't want to. You can just spray it on, kind of spray and go. You can take it out and about with you, you know, if you want to, you know, if you're out having lunch or, I know it's quite hard at the moment with uh, COVID, um, but to have a spray is really, really good, it's a really good idea. So Emolian are giving that away. Uh, Cheeky Panda, they're giving away a bundle as well of their products, um, different sort of toilet rolls or um, sort of um, handkerchief, um, handkerchiefs. Um, I forget the, the word's gone out of my head now. Like um, but if you look at a few, um, yeah, sort of, um, yeah, um, handy sized um, wipe type thing. Pocket tissue, like that, wipes, yeah, which are all really, really good, again, for lichen sclerosis. Um, so we've got that one going on. Um, yes, have donated uh, three tubes of their oil based lubricants as well. Um, Jane has, um, she's given away three of her books, Me, My Menopause and Vagina, which if you haven't read it, Read it, read it because it's so factual it is yeah and it, it's funny as well it's not serious i mean it is serious but you know there are some you know some really great sort of little quirks in there yeah. um from jane and her daughter so she's away five books to somebody which they can be given out as either christmas presents birthday presents um given to your medical professionals your nurses your doctors you know anybody can have them um and then we have dermosil as well who have donated a pair of their briefs, which again um, have really, really good effects for lichen sclerosis patients. They're really good for them because of the material that's used, because it's not a cotton material. Um, there's um, a spur, I, I can't remember the name of it now, but I will find it. I think it's on the, the, the image. Not surprises. So if you go on to Emma or Claire's Instagram, there's all, um, or Jane's indeed, um, there's loads of information on there how you can. Um, go for these competitions but also find out a lot more information we've got two minutes left do you want to quickly tell everybody about some research um yes okay so uh, me and claire are involved in uh, uh, there's three different researches going on at the moment um i'm obviously i can't say too much about them but at the moment they are in early yeah. stages yes so at the minute they're in the phases where they are contacting patients with lichen sclerosis, um, asking questions and getting a general idea. And the, the idea is that eventually they're hoping to go into trials to research uh, or trial um, laser treatment to see how effective that is yeah. on lichen sclerosis in the hopes that maybe one day we might be able to get it on the NHS, you know, maybe even to replace the steroid. Yeah. So that's going on as well. Fantastic. Yes. So, so Emma, 
been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Going by the comments that everyone's putting in there, they've all learned a lot. Someone said they learned more um, listening to you than they had in the last five years since their diagnosis. So this has been very, very worthwhile. You and Claire and Jane are all amazing. You all work relentlessly and so selflessly to raise awareness. So thank you so, so much. I will be popping your details in the comments once I've saved this onto um, IG TV. So thank you so much. And you got through it without coughing. No, yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, potters you, uh, use them if you've got a pot. It's good. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> You're very welcome. So, thank you very much, everybody. We're going to say good night now. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.